so over the last several days I have been engrossed with Metal Gear Solid 5 the Phantom Pain I wanted it to be dramatic I actually fucking forgot what the thing was there I was wanting to say Ground Zero but that wasn't that, that wasn't true I have been playing this game. I have 12% overall completion, for those of you curious. Which means I'm not, I'm probably not even halfway into the main story. Certainly not done all the side stuff. I haven't collected all the plants. I haven't done all the shit. There's no spoilers in this, by the way. So, if you have not played the game, or, uh, whatever, you know, just haven't had time to go get it or waiting whatever for some type of holiday to receive it as a present from a loved one whatever the hell I suggest you rent this game and play some of it because man this shit is fun now listen I want to thank my man my best friend of something fucking years Jake my man he he just I got on Xbox one day and he was sitting there, Xbox 360, because uh, he can't uh, get on the next gen and, and experience the crisp Christmas. And I was sitting there, I was talking to him. He, uh, I said, it was, "What you playing?" He said, "I'm playing Metal Gear Solid uh, Five. I went out, I went out and bought it. I said, "Well, all right then. Are you enjoying it?" He said, "Yeah." I said, "Yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying it quite a bit now. Listen, listen." He isn't a stealth game player, all right. He's not. He's he's a running gun, all right. He 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 likes to blow shit up. He likes to get in there, charge, action movie style, all right. I can't blame him. I do too. And Metal Gear Solid Five, I've watched. I've watched. In actuality, I watched. I sat down, and now this this was about a year or so ago. Maybe even two years, actually. I sat and I watched somebody play through the entirety of Metal Gear Solid, the first game, on Twitch. So, I understood. Now, Metal Gear Solid and Metal Gear Solid 5, The Phantom Pain, are, are drastically different games. But, that's what I expected this game to be. I just thought, oh, it's a 2015 version of that. I was wrong. Thankfully, I was. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with that style of game. It's just I wouldn't have liked to play that. So I watched Jim Sterling's Jimquisition, which is, of course, a weekly series done that releases every Monday that I highly encourage you to watch as they're some of the most well-done videos on the site. And it was talking about a character from the game. Of course, it had some minor spoilers in it. And she was a big-breasted beauty, and that also uh, had uh, some role in my decision to get the game. Uh, just something about a uh, mostly naked, badass sniper chick who doesn't talk very much. Oh, that just that sounds appealing. That sounds very appealing. Uh, because we all know, we those of you who've played Bioshock Infinite, Booker, 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 Booker. Oh man, that uh, sort of ruined my experience. That's uh, or yeah, <laughs> I mean you you know what I'm talking about. If you've lived through that hell, you you know of which I'm speaking. This I'm trying to think of some points that stood out to me the most and which appealed to me. I and I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't know what it is that makes that makes me feel so rewarded while playing. It's just when you're when you're sneaking in, right, and they it kill a guy, you know, uh, or rescue a prisoner or something like that. The fact that you can successfully sneak in and accomplish your task and sneak back out, those are some of the most rewarding moments in the game for me. Uh, 
I'm not going to spoil anything here, but I can talk of one specific uh, scenario, which is probably pretty early in the game, is when you go to rescue the scientist. All right, that's all I'm going to say. At the uh, power plant, that was thrilling sneaking in and out of that place with dozens of guards with with their thermals on and and uh helicopter flying around you know just sn tactically moving through the base getting to where i needed to go and then sneaking back out that was one of the most rewarding experiences i've ever had in a video game before in my life I, it's it was an accomplishment. It was a it was a damn good accomplishment, and uh, that I suppose is what has appealed to me the most about the game is it's it's just outrageously rewarding when you do well in the game. You can do very well, and it it just it feels so good. Uh, negatives about the game. The uh, fucking base management uh, aspect of it, I hate, I hate, I hate, I hate the, well, I, I say base management, the staff management specifically. Uh, early in the game at episodes, I believe it's seven and eight, it's two missions, uh, Jake is quite a bit ahead of me and he says that he hasn't had missions since that have required him to have a certain type of weapon uh, to complete. Well, 7 and 8, you have to have explosives, right? Now, C4 is something you can get early on. And there is a rocket launcher that you can get if your weapons development team is at level 12. All right, 12. Now, I did quite a bit of the side missions, quite a bit. I even I was even man, managed to bypass 7 and 8 and do 9, 10, 11. Maybe not 11. I can't remember exactly. Yeah, it was 11. Yeah, it was 11. And I still, my weapons development team, just due to RNG from people who had volunteered to join the the team and then people I had uh, brought back to base to join me. My weapons development team, I simply just RNG'd, didn't get anybody good at developing weapons. I had a lot of people who were really good at base development, which was another section which you can apply your staff. They have a bunch of different subsections where you can only get them to focus in on one. And my weapons development still wasn't good enough. I, I moved a bunch of people over, you know, who had uh, a second to worst rating, and I and I had to move even more people who just had the worst rating, and I still couldn't get to 12 reliably. So I had to do a bunch of free roams and just keep extracting people, sending them back to base, and sending out the combat unit to get volunteers and I never got a uh, uh, weapons option by the way on those combat teams you can send out uh, those those who join you who are really good at, at combat uh, they are giving a uh, alphabetical rating from uh, A well I shouldn't say A the S is in like S is in superb uh, it goes S, A, B, C, D, and then finally E. And there's an option to just assign whatever that they are best at. It'll assign them to whatever group they are best at. If they're great at weapon development, it'll put them there. You know, say they have a C in medical and a, uh, you know, D or whatever in intelligence uh, you can you know you know it, it's not like they're only good in one thing most of the times that's not that's, that's not the case whatever 
it's it's hard to explain unless you've played it, but trust me, the pain is real. The fucking RNG, man. You play, you know. I'm I'm guessing I was probably in the minority in my luck here, maybe not. But to to have to go out and not be able to continue the main story because of it, that irritated me greatly. And it wasn't something that I could help, you know. Uh, it it was just that way. And that has been my biggest and only problem so far. That 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 was an absolute pain in the ass. And even now that I'm much further past that section in the game, I still that my RNG is still bad, and I still don't get a lot of people who are good at development. My uh, I'm on fucking mission 14, and I stick my weapon development team, and even doing even more side stuff, and my weapon development team is still at, only at level 10. The way I got past 7 and 8 is I just moved a bunch of people who were really shitty at it into the section briefly, and I had the, I actually had the, there was, there's a limit to how many people you can assign to a task. I actually, even with people who had D ratings and E ratings, I moved them in there. And I still only barely got it to 12. Yeah, so. And even those explosives were shitty, you know, fucking seven or what or what was it six rockets out of the rocket launcher to kill a single tank that mission that that was by far my least favorite out of the entire fucking game and i even the first one when i didn't know the controls and shit that was still preferred over the uh rocket launcher jesus a uh, wonderful set of cast by the way uh, and it, you don't have to worry i'll say i'll say one more thing before i go on is for those of you who are like me who were very, very, very cautious before buying this game just due to thinking, oh, I don't know the lore, and I don't know all the events, uh, you know, whatever, Don't you don't even have to worry about that. You don't even have to worry about it because, and this isn't spoiling it too much, you will be given a lot of lore, some of it, uh, some of it is unavoidable, right? Those who played through every single game beat all beat all of them four or five fucking times. They'll still have to sit through some of the rehash of, of previous events. Uh, but a lot of the more deeply rooted side stuff, because there are people who want to know it, and then there's people who don't give a fuck. Uh, And there's also people who don't give a fuck but would still like to know bits and pieces. So what they do is is it's broken up into different parts. And as you go through the game and you meet more people and uh, more elements are introduced and things are brought back up and as things become relevant, uh, an advisor in the game will give you cassette tapes which will automatically be added to your inventory as certain missions are cleared and you can listen to them leisurely as you drive around in the jeep or sit in your helicopter or whatever the hell and it will recover and it'll cover a lot of it a lot and then there's uh, there's like a encyclopedia that goes over a lot of the things it's just it, it, it's good it's real good you will not be lacking in information everything you need to know slash want to know you can find and even if you and, and if you can't if you can't which I doubt will happen in this game you can just always google it you can google it you're not going to be missing anything too severe as Almost all of it will be covered. <sighs> there you go. That's that's very important in game development, by the way. I'm glad I'm glad that they did that. Uh, I can't think of. I played a lot of franchises, right? And I mean games that have even 
five or six or seven or so installments, maybe sometimes even more, mainly Dynasty Warriors comes to mind. Uh, well, I, I, I guess Call of Duty as well. There's just how many fucking Grand Theft Auto games and... Uh, Let's see, what else here? What else? Um, hmm. Yeah, nothing really comes to mind, I guess. Nothing really comes to mind. But, and, and I can't really say that I've noticed a time where I was playing a franchise where previous information was hard to come by and you were left confused unless you played a lot of the prior games. Uh, I tell you what, I tell you what, I can't think of a single game that did not cover a lot of the information from the last one, and or it, or it did just not in great. It, it left me unsatisfied, and that was Battlefield Bad Company Two. The thing about that is, is I actually played the first Bad Company, so uh, it's hard to say. Uh, I mean, it's not, it's not like you like that's important anyway. Let's see, Halo. Halo is great at it. Uh, actually, you know what? I take that back. I take that back. Halo 3 was really shitty at covering what had happened in great length in Halo and Halo 2. That 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 was actually... Uh, Halo 3 was the first Halo game I played, and uh, I was through for a fucking loop. But I was... Uh, Yeah, I, 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 I guess you could say I was uncaring as well. I've played that game recently, and a lot, a lot of it's just I'm not going to get into great length about the plot of Halo and Metal Gear Solid uh, video, but it has been done. At the very least, we can say that it has been done before. Metal Gear Solid was good at that. Uh, controls work fine. None none of it feels stiff. As a matter of fact, a lot of times it feels like there's a lot of shit that's uh, out of your control, but not in a couldn't react fast enough way. It's, you know, like when you're riding the horse and you're fucking galloping down and you're trying to... Pull. That's. I mean, it's sort of realistic. I, I suppose it takes. A, it takes a second for the horse to stop instead of immediately stopping. Like in, I don't know, fucking uh, Red Dead Redemption, for example. You could just bam, halt the fucker. Uh, I actually haven't played that. Yeah, I, yeah, Dynasty Warriors would actually probably be a better example of. Uh, of just fucking halting the horse instead of uh, having to slow it down. Mm. Yep. I recommend you get the game. That's it. I love you. Peace. I'm actually going to go and fucking Kodak printer, man. I don't want to update all right, stop asking me to fucking update Kodak. I know you watch my videos. Don't do it. Uh, don't stay casual. Get good. I'll see you in the next one.